Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's MSK Unknown Case, case number 92. We have a frontal cone down view through the foot. And the question here, that's high yield, is what is the mechanism of injury associated with this fracture? So I hope everyone sees this lucency here, right? This is along the base of the fifth metatarsal. There is a fracture here. It's sort of a common muted non-displaced fracture. It's non-displaced because we don't see fracture fragments that are displaced anywhere, but it is common muted because we can see a fracture line there, a fracture line there, a fracture line there, certainly more than two parts, right? So what is the mechanism of injury here? Is this inversion injury, adduction force to the forefoot, repetitive microtrauma or axial loading? And this is actually one of three main fractures that we see in the metatarsals. This would be a Jones fracture at the metadiaphyseal junction. And of course, we know that the Jones fracture is a result of adduction force to the forefoot when the ankle is in plantar flexion, right? So B would be the right answer here. Now, a pseudo Jones fracture is usually right here. It's on the very base of the fifth metatarsal. That's usually an inversion injury. And that usually results when there's an avulsion to the plantar, the lateral cord of the plantar fascia, or where the peroneus brevis inserts along the base of the fifth metatarsal. So when you have an avulsion of either of those two structures, you often get a pseudo Jones fracture, and that's an inversion injury. A stress fracture, which happens along the diaphysis, which would be right here along the middle of the metatarsal, that is related to chronic repetitive microtrauma, often seen in runners, athletes. So C would be the answer there. But a Jones fracture, which is what we're seeing here, is an adduction force to the forefoot when the ankle is in plantar flexion. And axial loading is not related to any of these three mechanisms. However, axial loading is common in many other traumatic situations. Now, I want to just go over these three fractures because they're very important. They have totally different mechanisms of injury and they have different uh, implications for treatment. So the pseudo Jones which is the one that's most proximal. It's at the very base of the fifth metatarsal. That's where the lateral cord of the plantar fascia inserts or the proneus brevis. This again is when inversion, when the foot is plantar flexed. And really the treatment here is pretty good. It's just conservative, you know, give them ice, a walker. There's great vascularity there. It'll heal usually on its own. Now with Jones fracture, like we saw here, that's at the metadiaphyseal junction. It's usually when there's an adduction force to the forefoot when the ankle is in plantar flexion. And this treatment is more aggressive because the blood supply here is not very good. It's not going to heal on its own. You often will need ORIF to treat this. And then, of course, a stress fracture, which is due to chronic repetitive microtrauma, often in marathon runners in the middle of the metatarsal, often can have cortical thickening, maybe a small loosened fracture line. This also needs to be treated a little bit more aggressively. Um, because there's poor blood supply there and sometimes may or may not require ORIF. So these are the three major metatarsal shaft fractures, different mechanisms of injuries and different implications for treatment. Hope this was helpful in elucidating these three types of fractures. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.